dear facebook pure urology viewers good evening one and all uh, today topic is uh, the vesico vesical fistula large one which is repaired through the parvesically uh, which uh, happened post hysterectomy the topic is post uh, uh, hysterectomy high vvf large one repaired parvesically the speaker is dr nikhil khatar sir who is from uh, um, presently running the peri neurology clinic new delhi and attached as a visiting faculty of uh, artemis gurgaon and holy family hospital new delhi i will share the screen about his cv and then i will hand over the program at the uh, end of it so the the video based surgical presentation as vesical repair for vesical repair for high vvf he his field of interest are reconstructive urology female urology and neurology he is a proponent of vesical repair for vvfs generous use of retroperitoneoscopy in renal surgeries he is a core member of indian guidelines committee of the urology society of india for adult urinary incontinence and urethral stricture and also the member of female and functional urology sub specialty section of the usi he has uh, over 30 indexed publication they have authored a book on female bladder outlet obstruction and urethral reconstruction he is co-author for the book female bladder outlet obstruction and urethral reconstruction written as a te- written as a textbook for urology and urogynecology trainees and practitioners he is also a singer too and is a lead hindi vocalist for the only band of indian urologists that is a uh, string strasse uh, that's great highly appreciated sir thank you very much uh, dr nikhil sir recently i have seen the video you shared on youtube then i was impressed and immediately i contacted you that resulted our pure talk that's a very good gesture that immediately you accepted what made you uh, first of all thank you very much for uh, being with us today sir thank you, thank you for, for the invitation thanks a lot thank you sir uh, what made you to get interest uh, uh, in urology first and where did you do your uh, mch sir first of all uh, please do not address me sir i am your uh, i think uh, i may be a couple of years junior to you only i uh, completed uh, i was doing my ms in surgery at kgmc lucknow when okay. i um, first uh, had a posting in urology and there i was impressed with uh, dr divakar dalela's work and uh, that is what uh, made me somehow that um, affected my decision and for choosing urology and then uh, i uh, got selected and uh, completed my urology training from jipmer pondicherry and oh. uh, under dr durai rajan which year sir which year you uh... I, i joined in 2004 and completed in 2007 okay <laughs> sorry so you uh, were trained under the uh, uh, hod whom sir Do- dr ln durai rajan oh great <laughs> very good so you are my contemporary sir one or two years uh, uh, junior to me maybe i finished in 2005 and uh, you finished in 2006 or 7 7 7 nice sir uh, that's good uh, and after that how you focused uh, on female urology uh, what was your uh, intention how you made uh, progress in this so initially uh, i was doing everything i i uh, after working for one year in pondicherry at a private uh, medical college that is pims i uh, then joined rml hospital as a teaching faculty as assistant professor rml hospital delhi with dr rajiv sood and uh, there i uh, got to work a lot on malignancies i we we started doing pic channels uh, it was started when i and dr rishi nayar were there and together all, uh, only we started uh, trans uh, the laparoscopy program there uh, a lot of retroperitoneoscopies and also uh, a lot lot of uh, laparoscopic surgeries and then uh, somehow uh, i developed interest in in uh, vaginal repairs the perineal repair uh, i i actually developed interest in the entire uh, of perineal surgeries where radical perineal prostatectomy we lab, uh, this vaginal repair for vvf female structures 
and uh, as i kept on doing I, the interest kept on kept on increasing right good so with this introduction please hand over the uh, i will hand over the program to you uh, please proceed sir you can share the screen and uh, uh, present the case which we have done so basically surgical technique is the focus of this pure urology forum and uh, uh, please do sir thank you so much for allowing me to share the screen i will I will have a, I have a basic introduction. I after a basic introduction, I have two videos for the same technique. One was shot in two thousand and eleven, and the other one was shot from a live uh, conference recently. And one has voiceover. One uh, in the other one, I will be uh, just presenting it. we can stop in between also whenever you want so this is vaginal repair for high post hysterectomy vvs we are not talking of large vvs we are talking of uh, high fistula which are generally supra trigonal yeah so today uh, hysterectomy is the most common etiology and it is said that one in 1200 patients develop uh, fistula after hysterectomy overall and uh, one in 455 after lap whereas one in 958 after abdominal hysterectomy so after laparoscopic hysterectomy the chances are almost double and uh, very rare in vaginal hysterectomy this is data from 62000 finnish women and rates are more for uh, uh, after radical hysterectomy yeah the term high and low is generally not mentioned in the literature the more accepted terms are supra trigonal and trigonal and uh, uh, you must realize that all post hysterectomy fistula are supra trigonal whereas all uh, uh, most of the obstetric fistulae are uh, trigonal so the technique which i use is a modified latsko technique how i developed interest in this is uh, because uh, of uh, my mentor dr durai rajan uh, he used to do uh, lights go repair uh, and was very passionate about it and we published also when i was a resident and uh, these were the figures at that time during my residency i sat down with the uh, medical illustrator and got these figures drawn and uh, in that uh, paper uh we had mentioned that um, that this technique deserves wider adoption by urological community and should be a benchmark for comparison of laparoscopic repair of vvf rather than abdominal approach and we also mentioned that urologists should feel more encouraged to adopt this age old technique that has stood the test of time rather than exploring more complex uh, versions of repair so this is this was first described in 1914 by Latsko uh, it was a paper of around 30 or 40 patients as i remember with uh, uh, almost 80% uh, success rate so uh, so that is the technique so I, I, without further wasting any any more time let us uh, see uh, how how it is yeah the cystoscopy where we can see uh, a pretty large uh, uh, vesico vaginal fistula yeah bonal uh, right or it so it is almost in the middle more towards the right side and approximately 1 and 1/2 to 2 cm above the uh, bar. the bladder okay there is no no other fistula it is very important actually in the scopy to identify the number of fistula and um, to exclude uh, any ureteric uh, fistula which can be concomitant so to have a traction we always have either a foley or some kind of a stiff dilator generally a foley is preferred uh, most of these repairs are approachable through the 
lithotomy position or you have to pro, uh, supine uh, split, split leg position is required no no i i do only in lithotomy position i have never done in uh, uh, split leg prone position yeah, yeah. Uh, dr dalela and dr uh, dr ganesh uh, mm, uh, do a lot of repairs doc, uh, in uh, prone position i have never developed the courage to do do that so after making that incision uh, from all sides vagina is vaginal mucosa is mobilized and a generous space uh, is created these flaps are created approximately 1 uh, and 1/2 to 2 cm on all sides it's a dissection without cautery sharp dissection and uh, once you uh, cut some fibers and then you spread this is the rim of vaginal mucosa which is left around the fistula we do not excise this rim so we don't freshen the edges instead the sutures are taken from the edges and before placement of sutures uh, generally uh, what we do is we pre place a per string from all around the fistula approximately 1.5 cm away so that after the fistula is closed this per string is tied and the fistula gets inverted okay and this is the uh, layer that acts as a second layer coverage so we do not use any marshes flap or omentum generally this uh, perivesical tissue or sub vaginal tissue whatever you call it uh, this acts as the second layer here so the first uh, layer is the per string first uh, we place the per string but we tie it after closing the disc so we have pre placed the per string and then then the vaginal disc is close to vaginal di uh, vaginal disc sometimes from the posterior side you often uh, when you dissect there you enter pouch of douglas and you can dig out uh, uh, an appendix a peploeki or some peritoneum from there that you can use as a cover uh, usually i do it only for recurrent fistula not for the first time fistula yeah and how high we can go like this pretty high you can go for vaginal these are at the vaginal apex these fistula are at the vaginal apex this is uh, the completed repair where, where you can see the preserved vaginal depth yeah so next uh, is a small video again that is that was shot during a live demonstration uh, when i operated at rml hospital during perineo con in 2018 and that has a voice over i will allow that voice over to run okay now this is a post operative cystoscopy where we can see that none of the sutures have come inside so there are the repair that none of the sutures come inside and that is why even fistula which are very very close to the orifice can also be closed with the uh, with the with this technique yes because what are the sutures you are used vicra yes vicra so i allow this with with the mm, with the voice over i no hope that's okay this is a case of post hysterectomy supra trigonal high vesico vaginal fistula these fistulae are usually at the vaginal vault and are mostly solitary this is the cystoscopic view and we can see opening in the bladder in the midline supra trigonal area which is far away from both the uretric orifices 
A capacious vagina is a prerequisite. We can see a guide wire passed through the fistula. The fistula has to be cannulated with an 8 to 10 French Foley catheter to be pulled towards the introitus to facilitate dissection. A circumferential incision is given keeping a disc of vaginal tissue around the fistula. This disc should be around 2 to 3 millimeters. With sharp dissection, the vaginal flap is developed all around. The plane is between the vaginal wall and the bladder muscle, keeping the vaginal disc on the fistula and the original tract intact. At the end of this dissection, one should have a space of approximately 1.5 centimeters all around. The vaginal disc is then sutured transversely with interrupted sutures beginning from both the sides and then pulling out the Foley catheter at an appropriate time to complete this layer of closure in the midline. This suture line is only vaginal disc to vaginal disc closure and none of the sutures traverse through the bladder as is seen on cystoscopic view later. It is because of this that even fistula, which are very close to a ureteric orifice, can be closed without any risk of ureteric injury. Before pulling out the catheter, a purse string suture taking only bites of detrusor is started from 11 o'clock 1.5 centimeters away from fistula edge and continuing all around the fistula. Attraction of the catheter helps direct the sutures. Any penetration can cause the balloon to be ruptured. Final closure. This is part of first string. After this is yes, this is part of first string. Foley catheter is pulled out. Recording is done very nicely. Yes, because this was a conference video. Tying the purse string inverts the first layer of vaginal disc closure towards the bladder and brings a perivesical tissue layer over the first layer to make a robust second layer. The vagina is then sutured on itself as a third layer and no other interposition is required. There is hardly any shortening of the vaginal depth. Patient was allowed orally on the evening of surgery. Foley catheter is kept for two to three weeks depending on the size of fistula. A cystoscopy confirms the closure without any sutures in the bladder and relation of bilateral or... That's nice. And uh, then uh, this is... There are short clips what I do for recurrent video. There have been... Uh, some five or six recurrences out of my 80 odd repairs. So uh, there uh, I have had the opportunity to re-operate on uh, three of them with successful results. 
I did the same procedure again. So a recurrence leads to a fistula, which is the exactly the same. But this this patient, uh, which I'm going to show now, uh, get the posterior flap. Posterior flap. From posterior flap, we can enter the pouch of Douglas and can dig out a peritoneal flap as as I had shown you. This one is after a failed laparoscopic repair. Again, supratrigonal location. And you can identify the scar of the previous repair on the bladder. Here, see the posterior flap. Uh, I have gone a little more on the posterior side and could dig out the momentum which was used. This is the completed repair as I had shown earlier. And this is uh, the momentum from the previous repair. If you don't find that, then peritoneal flap can also be used. Have you ever thought of a, a visceral flap, something like Marshall's flap, labial flap, like that in complex repair? Marshall's flap, actually, actually it is... Uh, uh, for Marsh's flap, it is very high. I have not used, but I have uh, uh, on a, on a personal communication. Doctor uh, Bhatial uses uh, Marsh's flap even in such high fistula. I have not never used. This one is another very interesting fistula where this was a post radiation VVF uh, who was repaired twice: once uh, vaginally, once abdominally. And uh, then uh, when she came to us, uh, this was done at Medanta, we realized that her bladder capacity is very small. So along with VVF repair, abdominal VVF repair and augmentation was done. She developed a fistula on 10th day and this is after, after 3 to 4 months of, develop, of the first repair where augmentation was done. You can see the augmented, uh, this is the uh, ileum and the bladder junction all. Here also this was repaired with a Latsko technique and uh, the momentum which was used in the first repair was reused here and uh, we succeeded fortunately in this patient. And this is again to show uh, that the depth generally maintained, the vaginal depth is maintained and the partial colpoclesis name given to Latsko is I think is a misnomer and should not be used because that has discouraged a generation of uh, urology surgeons to use this technique. When when uh, we published the paper from Jipmer, we had mentioned that this should be used more often and it is encouraging now that today uh, uh, I again some literature, so there are some recent uh, papers on transvaginal uh, let's go uh, technique which again mention the usefulness of this uh, approach in this paper uh, although they have used uh, the technique that they have used is a bit different uh, here they have gone uh, uh, a little further away from the fistula margin and have removed the entire uh, entire disc area leaving a very broad raw area and then that uh, no uh, that the fistula tract remains intact that is that is, that remains from the let's go technique 
and instead of a per string they have they have used uh, after closure of this fistula they have used imbricating sutures long uh, transversely imbricating sutures a couple of layers to bury the fistula further and further deep towards the bladder final cover with the vaginal layer they have also used this um, uh, in a complete vault prolapse fistula in a complete vault prolapse so at the same sitting they uh, uh, used uh, the they closed the fistula as well as repaired the prolapse and this is very interesting, although I, uh, to me, till now, uh, before I saw this paper today, today itself, uh, before I saw this paper, I had always held this belief that uh, LATSCO cannot be done uh, when a uterus is intact, cervix is, cervix is intact, because raising the flap is difficult from the cervix, because the mucosa is very tightly adherent there. So, in juxta cervical fistula, generally, uh, uh, Latsko is difficult, but here mm, they have uh, mentioned this lady who underwent a, a radical nephroureterectomy for upper tract malignancy and somehow uh, developed a, had a vaginal laceration during the surgery and later developed a uh, VVF, juxtra cervical. Here also they have used the same technique of uh, making the uh, peri fistula area raw and then approximating the edges with a successful outcome. So, mm, what more minimally invasive uh, we can ask for? This is a natural orifice uh, single, single opening surgery where uh, abdomen is not entered and uh, there are no extra um, armamentarium is not required, only a little of your skill and uh, the patient is orally allowed the same evening and is ambulatory the next day. Catheter remains for two to three weeks. Uh, some, some people are uh, bold enough to remove at 10 days also. Uh, it is not that the abdominal repair is not at all required. Definitely, it will be required for uh, such patients where multiple fistula are there. One, two, three, four, five. This uh, lady where abdominal repair along with ureteric reimplantation was done just uh, three, four days back and she is still in the post-op. So, so uh, that also has an indication. But uh, mm, most of this uh, such kind of high fistula, I deal with uh, the lats go repair. So that is all regarding the technique. So you can ask uh, your uh, you are you are muted so fast fire like that questions uh, number one uh, if the fistula has oblique tract also does it make any difference in this repair or no no generally not even oblique track that does not make much of a difference second question if you don't get an access with guide wire or foley's or ureteric catheter will you still directly go ahead and mobilize with stay stitches pulling down and then go ahead generally i uh, love to have an access if fistula is so small that there is no access then uh, a trial of uh, mm, buzzing with the pottery can can be have you ever succeeded with that yes i remember i tried that in three i have succeeded in one great so what is the normal suture used monocryl vicryl or uh, v-lock vicryl vicryl uh, four zero or five zero do you use loop in this procedure yes now i have started using loop okay if the fistula is the close to ureteric orifice do you put ureteric catheter or stent if it is close to ureteric orifice if generally it is not only the proximity generally uh, uh, it is the mobilization around the fistula when you do and then when you take per string there there are chances uh, that uh, ureter may come in so at times if you feel that then then you have some ureteric catheters uh, to, during taking per string so you can move them at the end and be sure that ureters are not taken 
this procedure is truly like daycare how many days you keep the patient in hospital and how much how many days iv antibiotics are given iv antibiotics two days i keep uh, them for 48 hours to 72 hours and when when they are ambulatory good enough to go then i send them i generally prefer that they remain uh, in close vicinity uh, for a week to 10 days before before uh, even if they are from uh, and some some outstation and uh, how many days you keep the foley's catheter two to three weeks two weeks generally two weeks okay uh, before before the surgery, what is your uh, mode of investigation? CT, contrast, and urography, or no? No, generally a CT urography is a must that uh, that we do. But uh, then, even even after that, I always uh, like to have uh, cystoscopy and RGP on all my patients because I have seen a. Uh, a ureteric uh, uh, ureterovaginal fistula a couple of times even when CT urography was normal. So I do not rely on entirely on findings of CT urography uh, or even the efflux coming out. I, I I have a video which I will be sharing some some other time about evaluation for VWF. But uh, it is, that completes the entire evaluation. Okay. Uh, I feel CT urography is very useful where sometimes ureter and VVF both are together. It will identify and it makes a huge difference. If you have a fistula with VVF and UVF, what will you do, sir? A fistula with vesicovaginal and ureterovaginal? Yes. Both? So yes. Then I think better will be an abdominal repair, uh, either laparoscopic or robotic or open, whatever the surgeon is comfortable with, along with uh, ureteric implant. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, have you uh, ever seen uh, the fistula failure in this type of visceral repair? Yes, I have seen, uh, as I told, five to six patients failed. And one, uh, two patients, I remember, they failed uh, very late. One patient, uh, uh, I distinctly remember, had an obstetric VVF uh, 25 years back uh, that was repaired at Ames. And then... Uh, she underwent hysterectomy uh, and uh, developed a post hysterectomy VVF that I repaired uh, uh, vaginally. And she leaked after a couple of months. She developed severe UTI in the post op, and then again uh, after uh, after a month, probably she she uh, she formed uh, some some collection behind the repair, which again opened up from the sutures later on. So, absolute indication for laparoscopic VVF repair? Only if vaginal is not possible or if you have to do an augmentation or a ureteric cream plan. Okay. So, most of the times you will attempt primarily vaginally in all cases. Yes. Even if supratrigoral also, large fistula. Yeah, yeah. Up to 3 cm, 4 cm I have done vaginally without any problem. So, at the end of the repair, you always check with cystoscopy for the look? I check not, not with cystoscopy. That, that was just for demonstration. Uh, for larger fistulas, I would like to have my ureteric catheters uh, because uh, at the periphery, uh, when you take the purse string, then you can take the um, ureter bites in the ureter, as I told. But definitely, I, I do a leak test. Okay. Two to three hundred ml, two hundred ml saline, and see. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for the presentation. Good cases, both the cases and the third one also. Post radiotherapy is very, very difficult. I must understand. Even yeah. then, you have done it and you succeeded. That two two times repaired surgery. I appreciate the technique. After a long time uh, going through the open latch code repair, so well understood well. I do most of the cases laparoscopically. I never thought this can be done so much. Uh, easy, easily from the vaginally, I think uh, at least uh, uh, in supra, I mean infra trigonal and trigonal fistulae must be tried with the vaginal repair. I will give a thought for that. Definitely, I have done many laparoscopically. Uh, most of them are uh, I felt uh, uh, just below the at the level of trigonal they are very difficult, especially in uh, uh, obese patients with a lot of adhesions.
to go to that to be, a, be, be at the trigon it is very difficult you need yeah. surgical expertise as well as challenge uh, retraction everything a uh, lot of the trigon definitely a vaginal has an edge has uh, definitely has an edge supra trigonal it is all preferred choice whatever you do but logically accept the interposition of the momentum or the fat rest of all things technically this looks sound but i must agree uh, it's a momental uh, interposition uh, there, there are some uh, studies reviews also and they say that momental interposition is not a must for for must. Uh, for repair so we feel more satisfied burden uh, the number of lap, uh, the number of hysterectomies that we are having in our country uh, uh, are too much and probably in the periphery uh, or the, the the fistula rate is also very high so it is uh, unfair to um, to think that every such uh, fistula will require should find a surgeon as capable as you who can repair it laparoscopically so so we should have more uh, vaginal uh, yeah, yesterday the idea of this female urology section the discussion was going on fortunately i was seeing i was thinking that uh, okay but uh, many people both yours and uh, dalalis are video they are extraordinary good quality videos and uh, then i was impressed i also wanted to see it ganesh gopal krishnan sir does it of late we are not going to workshop because of this store and laparoscopy uh, we, i have not gone and seen this is the uh, aim of this pure urology session that this video link will be there uh, forever uh, yeah. you can see the night also you need not worry just whenever you have casual time you can see and if you appreciate it give a thought now definitely when uh, trigonal fistula will come i will definitely i will look from the vagina and if it can be repaired easily and it takes very very less time sir if you are really good probably half an hour one hour you can finish your surgery large core repair whereas lap will take minimum 2 hours yeah from 2 hours and uh, there is chance that uh, as you said intra abdominal bowel injury i have seen one bowel injury fortunately i repaired it It's not that easy. Also, VVF repair and VVF repair in a yesterday's discussion in female urology section of USA. It is difficult, and the one first time uh, first time surgery like like Arvind Pando was telling is very important surgery, and uh, that that's the best for the patient. I agree. I agree very much. The last co today I appreciated that. Thank you very much, sir, and uh, I wish if any of other surgeries you do well in the future, we would like to have a discussion. like this in pure urology for yeah, thank yeah, you very sure, much sure sure thank you very much.